Office, and I'm the lead for Taxpayer Service in the Western Cape. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy schedules to join our webinar focusing on tax incentives. And we hope that the information shared today will help you to better understand the tax incentives available to our small business owners and empower you on your journey with SARS as you grow your business. As per our compliance theory, SARS believes that most taxpayers and traders are honest and aim to always do the right thing in fulfilling their fiscal obligations. Our role is, of course, to ensure that taxpayers and traders comply. Now, SARS has nine strategic objectives, and one of them is providing clarity and certainty, which is why we have formed this partnership with the Department of Economic Development and Tourism in hosting this webinar as a way of bringing valuable information to you, our taxpayers, with the aim of making your tax affairs easier and thereby improving compliance. Before we proceed with the program, please note the following. Please post all questions in the meeting chat box. Due to the Poppy Act and other secrecy provisions, please do not post any personal information when asking a question. We will try to answer as many questions as possible, either through the live chat or via our panelists later on. Also note that the Department of Economic Development and Tourism will be posting this webinar on their website. If by any chance you experience load shedding or any other technical glitches. Our program is divided into two parts. The first session is a presentation by an expert on tax incentives for small businesses, followed by the Q&A session for which we have which we have a panel of experts available. And our hashtag for today is hashtag your tax matters. Before we go into the presentations by SARS, allow me to introduce Rashid Tofi. Rashid is the Deputy Director General in the Department of Economic Development and Tourism uh, with a mandate of creating jobs in the Western Cape economy. Rashid served as the Chief Executive Officer of the Cape Town International Convention Centre and has worked extensively in the travel and tourism industry, both in South Africa and abroad. He spent three years based in Amsterdam, developing business and marketing strategies for businesses in over 30 countries, working extensively in Central Europe and Latin America. He has a degree in economic and environmental science, as well as an MBA, and has recently embarked on a PhD, focusing on how leaders make strategic decisions in crisis conditions. Rashid hates settling for mediocrity and wants to do profound things that impact positively on all those around him. Over to you, Rashid. Thank you very much, Mark and colleagues. Welcome, everybody. It's an absolute pleasure to be here today. And I, as the Department of Economic Development and Tourism in the Western Cape, we're celebrating Global Entrepreneurship Month in November. And by hosting this, this, this webinar in partnership with the South African Revenue Services, we want to ensure that, that small enterprises understand how it is that they, what they need to do in order to scale, grow, and competitively participate in the economy. Now, I read a recent article where Arundhati Roy said there was life. She called the pandemic a portal and she said there was life before um, what you did before the pandemic. Then we all passed through this portal and we emerged from the other side differently. And I, I hope you've all used this time to reflect. I know that it's been very hard on small businesses, on families, and we've all lost, lost loved ones. And um, it's important that we look at how we reflect and emerge from that portal, which is the pandemic, um, ready to face a next chapter in our, in our lives of our businesses. So as the department, 
we have a key mandate and responsibility to to contribute to the enabling environment so that businesses may flourish and grow. And in terms of this entrepreneurship month, month celebrated globally during November, our department is honored to host the first of many webinars with SARS to share important information to small enterprises on their tax obligations and incentives available from SARS. Before the COVID-19 pandemic, our economy was experiencing a period was already experiencing a period of protracted economic weakness, and the impact of COVID-19 is expected to be deep and long lasting, and it requires all stakeholders to address the underlying reasons for low growth, while at the same time implementing short term initiatives that will tackle some of the worst impacts of COVID-19. This is one of the reasons why we're hosting this webinar. So in the wake of this context, it's critical, we believe, that we reduce red tape and make it easier for you to do business in this province with partners and stakeholders so that businesses can go about the business of creating the much needed jobs in the economy. And for those who wish to start businesses of their own, we want you to understand what that compliance environment looks like. So business is a critical stakeholder to us as a department, and we want to ensure that your needs are met in terms of all the future webinars that we are hosting with stakeholders. So you may have noticed that we, we, we posed the question on the registration form. If you'd like to add more suggestion, suggestions, please, please provide your comments in the chat box, and we will have our team look at that as recommendations for future webinars. Ensuring that we re reduce red tape through the creation of such platforms and by promoting information is of utmost importance for us if we are to recover from this COVID-19 pandemic and create more jobs for citizens and our community at large. So thank you all today for taking the first step to doing that by joining us. So whether you're a small business or you're thinking of starting a business from scratch right now, we trust that this webinar will be useful in some way. Back to you, Mark, and I'm I'm excited to to participate today. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Rashid. And Saw certainly shares that excitement that you have. Um, now we move on to the first part of um, our webinar today, which is the presentation on tax incentives for small businesses. Now the presentation today will be done by Mr. Jolene Simon from SARS. Uh, Jolene is an educator at the Tax Base Broadening and Education Division. Uh, she started her career in 1986 as a registry clerk in Pretoria. Due to her appetite for figures, she then moved on in SARS to work in the cash office doing the trial balance and journals. Uh, from there, she moved up to work at the Transfer Duty Division in SARS. Uh, thereafter, she worked on various projects in SARS focusing on revenue. In 2009, she joined the Taxpayer Engagement Unit as an educator, a role she is extremely passionate about. Jolene, over to you. Thank you, Program Director. Um, just allow me to share my screen, please. Can you please um, confirm that my screen is visible? It is indeed. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, ladies and gents. Thank you for taking the time out to join us in this workshop. Hopefully, after today, you will know more about all the tax incentives offered by SARS, as well as your obligations to be tax compliant and to stay tax compliant within SARS. I would like to start off by reading the purpose and the disclaimer of this workshop. The purpose of this presentation is merely to provide an information in an easy, understandable format and is intended to make the provisions of the legislation more accessible. And then the disclaimer, the information therefore has no binding legal, legal effect and the relevant legislation must be consulted in the event of any doubt as to the meaning or application of any provision. So what is SARS? Let's look at SARS. SARS is basically 
part of government where we will do the collection. We, I always say we are the collectors of government. The amount that we need to collect for this financial year, 2023, is 1.682 billion rand. After we've then collected it, we will then pay it over to Treasury. So basically, government has a social responsibility towards each and every citizen in South Africa. So all of us can get a part of this basic service. So after we've then paid it over to Treasury, Treasury will then distribute it, just to name a few, basic services to education, health, welfare, policing, roads and infrastructure. When you look at income, now the question will always come up, what is income? Income for an individual will be your salary, your bonus, your overtime. Investment income will be interest or dividends income or foreign interest. If you have a small little trade on the sideline, it will be your trade profit or your renting of a fixed property. And then, of course, don't forget about the income that you can earn on YouTube, on blogs, or on TikTok. SARS will add that all as under the brackets of income. Now, what is my obligation as a taxpayer? The tax law changed in 2010, where we say each and every person earning an income in South Africa must have an income tax number. Now, if we look at the individual, you don't have to go into a SARS office to go join a queue and wait for an hour just to get yourself registered. We've made it so much easier. You can now register yourself by going onto e-filing or even the SARS Mobi app. You will click on the registration tab, follow the prompts, and you've got your tax number within real time. Once you are then registered, you might then also have to submit, if you meet the criteria, your annual income tax return. We call it the ITR12. You can also do that by means of e-filing or even the SARS Mobi app. Now, usually the submission due date, that will be addressed or announced by our commissioner. Assessments, you know, usually when we submit these returns, we always, when we in the um, rural areas, people will always ask us, they in the queue just to see if there's not the ITSI for them. Now, it's usually a due to you. If it's a due to you, SARS will refund it straight into your account, or it can be a due by you where you can then, where you then need to pay SARS. Or alternatively, you can make arrangements to pay SARS. If you are a provisional taxpayer, you of course have the IRP6 that also needs to be submitted. The first return or the first IRP6 and payment will be six months from the beginning of the year of assessment. The second return and payment will be um, on or before the last day of the year of assessment. And then of course, there's also a final payment, which will be seven months after the year of assessment. Deregistration, that must be done by SARS. That's for our individual. Now let's look at our company. A company, you will always start, your first point of entry will be at CIPC. CIPC, they will reserve your name for you. They will then on send that information to SARS and SARS will allocate an tax number to your entity. That tax number usually starts with a nine. You then also, once you register for income tax, you then also obliged to submit your ITR 14. That's usually due 12 months after the company's financial year end. Also, you also need to submit your IRP 6. Just as in the individual, the first IRP 6 plus the return plus the payment must be within six months from the beginning of the year of assessment. Second one, IRP 6 once again plus the payment on or before the last day of the year of assessment. And then the final payment seven months after the year of assessment, depending on the company's financial year end. Now, should you cease trading or 
um, the th company is going to be dissolved, then of course your first point of entry will once again be at CIPC, where you need to apply for the T registration of the company, and then you can come to SARS. Then another tax that you as an entity can be registered, that will be pay as you earn. Now you will only register for pay as you earn within 21 days from becoming an employer. You will do that by means of an RAV, we call it a RAF01 form, and that can also be done on e-filing. Once you're registered for pay as you earn, you then need to submit every month before the 7th of the following month, an EMP201. Also, going hand in hand with that, the first eight, um, the first six months of your um, tax year, you will then submit your first biannual reconciliation declaration, usually due by the end of October. That will be an EMP 501. And then the final recon due usually by the end of May, that will um, then also be submitted. The EMP 50102 will then also be submitted by your um, entity. The payments goes hand in hand with a 201. So once you've um, deducted the pay as you earn from your employee's salaries, that pay as you earn must also be paid over on a monthly base to SARS um, with the EMP 201 before the 7th of the following month. Once again, if your deregistration you need to either go into a SARS um, branch office with a written request for it to be deregistered, or you can consult or you can do it via your e-filing. Value added tax. Value added tax, we've got two types or two categories of registration. The one will be your voluntary registration where your taxable supplies is more than 50,000 Rand over a period of 12 months. And then also your compulsory registration where your taxable supplies exceeded a million Rand over a period of 12 months. Once you are registered for that, you then need to submit usually on or before the 25th of the following month, you need to submit your VAT, your VAT, 201. Now, this can also be done via your e-filing. Together with the VAT 201, if you then also need to pay in VAT to SARS, that must also accompany, be accompanied with the payment. So when you submit your VAT 201, the payment must also go in. We've got a bit of more, we're a bit more lenient there. If you are registered for e-filing, then both your submission of your 201 and your payment you've got until the last business day of the month to submit your 201 and to make payment. For deregistration, vendors who have ceased trading and who wish to apply for deregistration, they can also do so by means of writing to SARS. Now let's compare the company versus the individual. When you look at the company, the company will first of all declare his total income. We will then deduct less his expenses. That will then give us a profit or a loss. That profit will then be taxed in the hands of the company. Currently, the tax for a company is at 28%. Next year, it will be reduced to 27%. When we look at the individual, the individual will also declare the total amount that he received or accrued to him in a tax year. We will then allow the allowable deductions and also expenses, and that will then give us the taxable income. This tax will, or this taxable income will then be taxed in the hands of the member. And this will be according to the tax tables that you will find for individuals on the SARS website. Let's look at the rates of tax. Currently, your tax for companies is at a straight percentage of 28%. That means for the first um, 100 Rand 
of, of income or for the first rand of income, 28 cents will be going to its SARS. That will be adjusted um, as from after 31st of March next year, 2023, company's tax will go down with 1%, so it will then be 27%. Let's look at the different incentives that we offer from SARS by SARS. The first incentive that we offer ETI is an incentive that's aimed to encourage employers to hire to hire young work seekers. It was implemented the 1st of January 2014 and provisionally the end date will be the 28th of February 2029. The ETI applies to qualifying employees employed on or after the 1st of October 2013 by qualifying employers. Now I'd just like to stand still a little while on this qualifying employer and qualifying employees. When I refer to a qualifying employer, I'm referring to this employer must be registered for pay as you earn. And it's not, they may not be national, provincial or local sphere of government. And they were not, they must not have been disqualified by the Minister of Finance. When we go over to the qualifying employee, qualifying employee must be in the possession of a valid South African ID, refugee document or asylum seeker permit. They must be between the age of 18 and 30. Their wage may not be more than 6,499 rand a month. They must have been employed on or after the 1st of October 2013 and no domestic workers. So the payment on this incentive is realized to eligible employers being able to reduce the employees tax due by them by the amount of the ETI that they may claim. Now, when you look at that, the ETI, they will qualify for that for 24 months for qualifying employees. Now, when we look at the calculation, there's a calculation for the first 12 months, and then there's a separate calculation for the second 12 months. You will find that this calculation for the second 12 months is a bit less than the first 12 months. For instance, if you look at a salary, and it's also based on the salary that you pay the person. So if you look at a salary between 2,000 and 4,499 Rand, it's a fixed amount in the first 12 months of 1,000 Rand. When you look at a salary, exactly the same bracket, in the second 12 months, it's a fixed amount that you can used to offset against your pay as you earn that's payable to SARS of 500 Rand. So you will find the higher the um, amount that you pay them or the higher the wage or the salary that you pay them, then there's different um, formulas that must be used by yourself. The second tax incentive that we offer, that small business corporation tax. Now, I already know that when I say small business corporation tax, then people are thinking by themselves, please don't tell me I need to register for another tax type at SARS. This is actually not the case. Small business corporation tax, you are already registered for income tax at SARS. This is just another vehicle that you drive with. So in other words, if you think that you qualify for small business corporation tax, it's merely a tick on your tax return your ITR 14, that you need to do every year. Now, people will ask me, Jolene, why every year? Because your status could have changed throughout or during a year, the past year. So let's look at the qualifying criteria. The first one is not more than 20% of your revenue or of your income may be coming from investment income. Next one not more than 20% of your income may be coming from rendering a personal service. Now, when you refer to the Income Tax Act, the Act is extremely clear 
on what do we see as rendering a personal service. It's stipulated out there. That's your doctors, that's your veterinarians, um, just to refer to a few. Okay. Then further, we continue. You only qualify if you are a cooperative or a private company. So that excludes our sole proprietors, our partnerships, and our trusts. The shareholder of this entity, and it must have been for the entire year, may only have been natural people. So it may not have been another entity or another CC or another um, trust. The shareholders may only have interest into this specific entity. In other words, I always say to the people, you may not have a finger in any other pie, the shareholders. So you may only be a shareholder of this entity. And then last but not least, your gross income may not have exceeded 20 million rand over a period of 12 months. So if you think you qualify for all these that I've just mentioned, then this will be your tax percentage that you will pay. Now, previously, I have indicated to you that a company will pay tax currently at a flat rate of 28%. Now, remember, if I say they pay tax at 28%, it means on their business profit. Now, when you look at the business profit and you qualify for small business corporation tax, and your profit was up from one rand up until 91,250 rand, you will pay 0% tax. Once your profit is from 91,251 up until 365,000 rand, it's 7% tax. Then from 365 going up to 550,000, it's 21, and only then you reach the 28% the tax. So this is really a very reduced rate in tax if you do qualify for small business corporation tax. I'm going to move over to the next one that we offer. That will be your turnover tax. Now, turnover tax is a single tax system which taxes turns over turnovers and not your profit. So turnover tax is optional to businesses with a qualifying turnover of a million rand or less per annum. In other words, over a period of 12 months. It replaces the need to account for income tax, capital gains tax, dividend tax, and even value added tax, unless you still elected to be part of the VAT system. Now, before the beginning of the year, the assessment or such late date during that year of assessment as the commissioner may prescribe by the notice in the Gazette. That is, when am I supposed to register for turnover tax or the next registration within two months from the date of commencement of your business activities? In the case of a person that commenced business activities during the year of assessment, we will also allow you. Now, there's always decision making um, whether we should now rather go for small business corporation tax or shall I rather go for turnover tax? You know, when somebody is standing there in front of you and they're explaining all this, it sounds fairly simple. But when you need to go back to the drawing board and you now need to make this decision, then it's not as simple as anymore. So we are actually going to give you some criteria. We say record keeping, if it's too much for you, if it's too much of a burden and it's just too expensive, turnover tax will be your answer. If your current tax system is um, technically too difficult to comply with, turnover tax will be your answer. Or whether you th if you think that it's just too expensive to hire a tax practitioner um, to meet the requirements of the current tax system, turnover tax will be your answer. But they say at the bottom, please note, if a business is in an assessed loss situation, it may be better for you to stay on your current tax system. So this is really for the person that 
you don't have you ha don't have an accurate bookkeeping system in place. What must you do? Turnover tax will then be your answer or your go to. So how does this now work? Now remember, you're now getting taxed on your turnover. You're not going to be taxed on your profit. So irrespective of how many expenses you had, we will only look at your turnover for the year or the period of 12 months. So if your turnover was up until 335,000 Rand, there's no tax payable. From 335 up until 500,000 Rand, it's a 1% tax that will be payable. And if let's look at the very last one, if your um, turnover was 750,000 Rand and one and more, then it's a 3% tax. We're going to do a comparison on this. So the criteria here will be your overall tax comparison, your total income or your total sales, whatever you want to call it, was 600,000 Rand. The expenses, the allowable expenses, was 180,000 Rand for the year. That leaves us with a taxable income of 420,000 Rand for the year. So how, what effect will this now have on a sole proprietor? If this was a sole proprietor, his tax will be on 420,000 Rand, will be 78,040 Rand. A company um, before March 2023, 28% will pay 117,600 Rand of tax. After March 2023, on 420,000, the company will pay 113,400 Rand tax. A company, if they do qualify for small business corporation tax, the tax will be 30,713 Rand. And then for turnover tax, of course, the tax will only be 5,200 Rand. 50 Rand. So you can see that the two tax incentives that we offer, the SBC, Small Business Corporation Tax, and Turnover Tax, is really a reduced tax rate. Then also, if after today, if you cannot remember one single word that Jolene has said, guys, please don't forget about our digital channels. Um, this one is specifically YouTube. We've got a SARS YouTube. Please refer to that for further information after today on all different tax topics. Compliance. Compliance means, have I registered on time? Have I submitted my returns on time? My supporting documents, if SARS requests supporting documents, was that filed by me on time? Usually we will give you 21 days to submit those supporting documents. If I do have outstanding monies that I need to pay SARS, I will either try to pay it on time. If not possible, I can also make payment arrangements. This oil all boils down to, I need a tax compliance certificate or a tax clearance or a um, good standing certificate from SARS. And if you have not filed your tax forms or you are in areas with the payments of your pay as you earn, for instance, to SARS, we cannot issue you with that tax clearance or letter of good standing. Then also the digital platforms, we've really jacked that up over the COVID. I'm sure that COVID gave us a kick um, to make sure that people don't have to join the queues anymore at SARS. They can now um, deal with SARS in the comfort of their own home. Of course, on e-filing, you can now register your employees. Um, you can request your tax compliance status. You can register new tax products. You can update your registered details. You can submit your returns. That's now your income tax return, your pay as you earn, as well as your VAT returns. You can make payments. You can even al allow for payment arrangements. So that will be on the e-filing for individuals, sole proprietors and partners. Also on e-filing, you can do your registration. You can register yourself. You can request 
a notice of registration. We need that quite often. The IT150, you can submit your tax forms, you can make payments, you can request payments arrangements from SARS. Um, you can um, request also your tax compliance. You can update your registered particulars. Now, remember, this can either be done on e-filing. This can also be done onto the SARS Mobi app. Then also, if you go to the SARS website, www.sars.gov.za, there's also quite a few functions. But specifically, if you go and click on online services, you can, you not remember now, I'm not registered, for instance, for e-filing, nor am I registered for the SARS Mobi app. I'm just by merely going into the SARS website. I can also request my tax reference number. I can upload supporting documents. I can, re can report a new estate. I can register as a representative. I can request my tax compliance status. I can make an online booking. Now, this is very important. Remember, we cannot just walk into a SARS any longer. We have to secure a booking for ourselves. And you will do that then by going onto the SARS website. Record keeping, remember, documentary proof is essential to enable you to claim actual expenses incurred. Expenses may be overlooked unless you record them at the time they are incurred to enable you to comply with your tax returns accurately. And then all documents must always be kept for a period of five tax years from the date of submission of that tax return. And then go digital. We are very proud. And yes, SARS, I will always say, guys, Please join SARS on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. You will find out submission dates there. You will not only important dates, but you will also um, find that we give you all types of information that you might need in the future. And that then concludes my presentation for today. Thank you, Program Director. Thank you for that. Uh... Charlene, not a very easy topic to cover, but you did an excellent job. Thank you so much um, for that. We will now be moving on to the second part um, of our webinar, which is the Q&A. As I mentioned earlier, uh, please post uh, your questions in the chat box and uh, we will aim to answer the questions uh, from there. Um, but seeing that we are at this stage, uh, going to respond to those questions, um, whatever you post, um, I will read out to our panelists. Let me, however, first introduce them. Um, we have Lindsay Kutsi, that is an educator from our tax based broadening team. Good afternoon, Lindsay. Then we okay. have Yam Kela Msomi. He is a national content developer for taxpayer and trader education. Good afternoon, Yam Kele. Then we have uh, Jolene. You've just uh, met Jolene. We also have uh, Eugene Hubert for uh, e-filing and easy file questions. Good afternoon, Eugene. And last but not least, at least we've got um, Aisha Augustus from the Western Cape Department of Economic Development and Tourism. That's also available for any questions in that space. And then a quick reminder again, um, uh, please do not post um, any personal information um, if you have uh, particular questions um, that you want to pose. So just to get the ball rolling, I have um, one or two questions that um, I will start the session off. The first one for Jan Kela. Um, uh, we have a new company as for registered directors. How do we register a representative with SARS? Good afternoon once again, and thank you, Program Director, for that question. Um, if a company has more than one director, then this means that one representative must be nominated as an official representative person and must be registered with SARS. So now, registered representative registration does not require an e-booking appointment. 
uh, it can easily be done on the SARS online query system, which is also known as um, online services. And also in some of these cases, you might find that the representative registration is finalized on the SARS system, but now the individual himself, or which is the representative, might also need to update their personal details with SARS so as to enable other functionalities within e-filing and also activation of various text types. Thank you very much, Program Director. Thank you, Yom Kela. I've got a question then from the um, uh, uh, from those who joined us. Uh, the first one, uh, Jolene, this one I'll give to you. Why do you pay provisional tax twice a year? Provisional tax is because you are you're running your own business. You don't have to um, you don't have an employer deducting tax every month from your income. So we are trying to make it easier on you as the person running his own business to, can I call it budget, by submitting your annual tax return. So in other words, every six months, you will then say, um, SARS, for the past six months, this was my estimated profit that I've made, and here is my tax on that. You will then do it in the second six months as well, and then you will submit your annual tax return. Now, when you submit your annual tax return, you already have a credit lying there in the kitty. So that will just be easier on you um, not to have a huge amount to pay in at the end of the day. Thank you, Program Director. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Charlene. And I think um, uh, to, to further maybe just add to that, remember, Remember that your first um, provisional payment will be an estimation. Um, so to your second one, but at least you're coming closer to get more information around what your final declaration will be like. So that second um, uh, submission that you make then allows you to make a much better or give SARS a much better indication of what your final potential payment will be. And there's, of course, also the option for a third top up payment. The next question, is there tax payable on dividends, uh, Lindsay? Good afternoon, Program Director. Thank you for that question. Yes, it is. Um, according to the um, Act, it would be 15% on dividends. I can't elaborate. I'm not going to be elaborating any more on that, but it's 15% on the dividends, the company dividends that are paid out. Thank you so much, Lindsay. And whilst you are on the floor, what will happen if I no longer meet the criteria for small business corporation? Okay. Um, in that case, um, if you no longer meet the criteria, you will no longer have the benefits of a split rate of tax and also the benefits of the depreciation. So then you basically will be forced to go back into the normal tax uh, for a company, which would then be 28%. So you won't no longer have the benefit of getting the tax incentive. So then um, at this point in time, it's 28%. And then from the 1st of March 2023, it should be going to 27. Thank you, Program Director. Thank you, Lindsay. So today we heard about ETI. And uh, Yam Keller, the question I have for you is, what if one of my employees happens to not qualify and I have claimed ETI for him or her? Will SARS penalize me? All right. Um, thanks once again for that question. Um, definitely an employer will be penalized for that. And then these penalties will apply when an employer claims for the incentive for an empl employee who qualifies and earns less than the minimum wage of um, 2,000 rands, where a minimum wage is not applicable. Also, a penalty equal to 100% of the ETI that has been claimed for that specific employee will be imposed. So this will lead to an underpayment of employees tax and possible interest and penalties in terms of the tax administration acts. So the penalties will also apply when an employer is believed to have um, displaced an employee in order to employ an employee who qualifies for the incentive. So in that case, a penalty of 30,000 rands will be levied for each employee that is believed to have been displaced by another qualifying employee. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And then a quick reminder, um that uh, any questions that you have please feel free to post it in our meeting chat as well 
Eugene, for you, you know, I've been uh, requested to upload outstanding documents for my e-filing activation. I uploaded these documents and I've been waiting. How long does it take for an e-filing uh, profile to be activated? Thank you, uh, Program Director. <clears throat> yes, um, the upload of docs obviously uh, um, is done in, in two ways, just to me add uh, e-filing as, as the link normally. But you can also do it on the online services, obviously adding your reference number to ensure that it's linked to the um, uh, actual case that has been uh, logged. But uh, the importance here to understand is it can take anything up to 21 working days for this action to take place because there's several things that need to happen in the background for it to become active. Thank you for that, Eugene. Much appreciated. Lindsay, if I, I no longer if I no longer want to be on the turnover tax system, do I need to apply or notify SARS? Uh, can I exit this system at any given point in time? Thank you, Program Director, for that question. I've actually turned it into two questions. Um, if I no longer want to be on turnover tax system, do I need to apply or notify SARS? So they say business using the turnover tax option can notify SARS to be voluntary deregistered or SARS can initiate a compulsory deregistration. In other words, if that so or that business then um, has lost the qualification, they are earning more or their income, their turnover is more than a million, SARS will then inform them that it's a compulsory deregistration, which then takes them back to the normal income tax system. Um, it says here that a taxpayer can send a written request via email or alternatively, SARS will send a letter to the taxpayer informing them of the deregistration. And then also when a, de when a registered business deregistrates from an option or the voluntary option, the option voluntary, sorry, deregistration is effective from the beginning of the year of assessment. So in saying that at for turnover tax, it always runs or the tax year always runs from the 1st of March until the 28th of February. So they're saying there that when you deregister, the deregistration is effective from the beginning of the year of assessment. So that is if you go out voluntary. OK, so if you go out compulsory, so for example, you have three months into the year, you um, now need to deregister from turnover tax because your turnovers exceed the million or you don't qualify no longer, then it will then only start your um, tax year, your income tax side of the, or your other tax will only start three months in. But if you leave the system, you will, they will take it back to the, the beginning of the tax year. And then it's also important for business to know, or for an individual even to know that if you leave the turnover tax system voluntary, you cannot re-enter the system again. So thank you, program director for that. Thank you, Lindsay. Uh, Jolene, uh, uh, the question uh, for you is, do the rates of small business corporation um, change like those um, of individuals, for example? Thank you, Program Di Director, for that question. Um, if they refer to specifically the small business corporation tax rates, yes, usually the Minister of Finance will um, advise during the budget speech, um, usually held in February, what the new rates will be, you will find that this first zero percent that goes in cahoots with the tax threshold of the year. So currently um, it's from one rand up until 91,250 um, rand that it's as no percent. So yes, the um, small business corporation tax um, rates gets adjusted by our Minister of Finance every year. Over to you, Program Director. Thank you, Jolene. Um, uh, Eugene, we've just exited our biannual recon uh, submission deadline. What is the current version of Easy File, and how do you go about upgrading um, from the uh, to the current version? Uh, yes, thank you, Program Director. This is a very, very important one uh, because uh, people are having problems around this area. So the current version is 7.2.9 with a new forms viewer, which is version 1.3.4. So 
a lot of people are using the update function, which we always say to them, it's better to do the download because it's more secure. You're able to uh, do a backup if you go offline, because obviously if you're not offline, easy file detects there's an update and it tells you there's an update. Click OK or update, which then you click OK, go offline, make a backup after you open easy file, go back online and download it from the e-filing website from the actual icon of easy file that displays there. The important thing here is <clears throat> there's been an update for the Adobe Air license. And if you, I think, on version 7.2.7 or earlier, you may incur an error when you try and install the new version. It says, sorry, an error occurred. Please uh, contact the uh, software administrator. Uh, so the simple process there is to then uninstall the previous version and then install the new version and you should be able to work. As far as the forms viewer is concerned, you may need to uh, ensure that you run the installation from the utilities system default before trying to use it. Thank you, program director. Thank you, Gene. And a follow up on that one, you know, not, not all of us is tech savvy. So if my easy file backup is missing, um, is there any way that SARS can assist in uh, retrieving uh, my backups? Um, no, unfortunately, it's a one way track. Whatever you submit to SARS is not returnable. Uh, the user is responsible for looking after the data. And it's very important here to either have a external drive, USB, disk, uh, cloud or server where you can copy your backup to. We must remember that easy file works on the local drive and many people today decide that because there's a cloud, let me back up it, back it up to the cloud and your backup disappears into the cloud, not completing. And next time you try and restore it, it's gone. Reason being, it's encrypted. We use the Java called Azul Zulu Java, and it's not on the server, it's not on the external drive, it's it's not in the cloud. And when the encryption time comes for the backup, there's no encryption and the data disappears into the mist. So please ensure that you always look on, work on the local drive, whether you are restoring a backup, making a backup, doing a merge, doing an import of a CSV file, first copy your file to your local C drive or desktop, and then work with it. Otherwise, pay the consequences, loss of data. Thank you, Program Director. Thank you, Eugene. Um, I don't see any other questions uh, in the chat. Um, I therefore, at this point in time, would um, like to thank the panelists uh, for their availability. Um, Aisha, Lindsay, uh, Yamkela, uh, Jolene and Eugene, thank you so much uh, for being available. If uh, for the remaining couple of minutes we do see anything pop up, um, we'll uh, be sure to make an effort of responding to those questions um, as well. That then um, brings us to uh, the end of our webinar today. Um, from SARS's side, um, uh, firstly, we would like to uh, convey a word of thanks to uh, Terat, uh, Rashid Tofi and the colleagues there, thank you so much for the collaboration that um, we can have in working with you and uh, we look forward to uh, the continued partnership and as was mentioned earlier uh, by uh, Rashid, there will be more webinars of this nature. So uh, please join us. Um, uh, we aim to have them as uh, informative and uh, as simple as possible because tax can be a very complex and a complex matter. Um, uh, and so to um, all those who attended today, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Um, uh, and we hope that you've gained um, a better understanding of your tax obligation as well as the various um, uh, uh, schemes that we have, uh, including tax incentive for small businesses. Um, if you require more information, please visit the SARS website, um, the SARS uh, TV on YouTube. Um, you can also follow us, um, us on SARS. Uh, you can follow SARS on Twitter, LinkedIn and Facebook. And then, of course, um, if you have any queries um, regarding any of your transactions, um, you can also email us at contact us at sars.gov.za or dial our contact center at 0800. 
double zero seven two double seven. That's it from SARS aside. Thank you so much. Um, Rashid, over to you. Thank you, Mark. That was fantastic. I really enjoyed that. For the first time we've done it, I wanted to say thank you to all the panelists you did fantastically and to our sign language interpreters. Thank you for being here today. So thank you all for attending the webinar. Um, we'd like to thank you for empowering yourself with this critical information that I'm sure is going to help you in your business and, and will help you flourish, particularly as we recover from COVID. Um, I'd also like to thank SARS for their presence and for curating such a curating such a brilliant webinar with information that was, I think, crucial for small businesses. We take note of your comments in the chat box. Thank you all for participating. And um, yeah, today's webinar will be emailed to everybody who participated. And it will be uploaded onto our red tape reduction website um, with the actual copy of the slide presentation. And that can be found at our, our Western Cape government website. So that's www.westerncape, one word, .gov.za forward slash red dash tape dash reduction um, to access any of the resources that we make available to assist small businesses in there and enterprises. Um, so thank you once again to, to the Red Tape Reduction Unit and particularly Aisha for the work that you've done in putting this together and for facilitating this partnership. But most of all, I want to thank all of you, the citizens and the businesses who came out as part of Entrepreneurship Month, wanting to understand your environment in order to grow and scale your businesses within this, the Western Cape province. So thank you all. Take care and we'll see you all at the next webinar. Good afternoon. Bye-bye.